Good morning. Well, I almost missed the morning. And I'm sorry that I missed you yesterday. First week, first full week back from vacation. And I tell you, I'm coming apart at the seams. Started out this morning, thought I had an alarm set, and I didn't. So, I mean, it's one of those days, and my pup parts got crushed. So, I'm just saying, it's an ugly morning already. So I missed Tuesday, so let's go ahead and do our, our Bible and God in our country um, for, for today. I don't want to go quite as far back as Founding Fathers this morning, but I do want to go back a little ways to, to one of the presidents who I think was a fantastic president, and that would be Ronald Reagan. Lamentation 3.26 says, It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Now, it's kind of unusual in this verse because the word hope and the word that translates as quietly wait are very similar. They both mean to wait or to, to hope for, to, uh, to, to be patient um, in, in waiting. And one is to, to hope but also to quietly hope. So wait and to quietly wait. So he's telling us it is good that we learn to wait, that we learn to be patient and, and as we wait on the Lord, not to, um, not to be anxious. You know, Paul talked about not being anxious for anything, and, but with, with prayer and supplication, make our requests made known to God. And he tells us it's good that we wait. It helps us. It helps us build some endurance. It's important that we learn to wait, learn to hope for the Lord, wait for the salvation of the Lord. There are times that things go on like what we see in our country right now. We know that there's two sides to this. We know that there is the side that says that if we as the Christian people of this nation would fall on our face and, and ask for forgiveness and confess the sins of our nation, our personal sins, the sins of our nation, that God will turn and, and then heal our land. He will restore us. We also know that the other side of this coin is also true, that as we approach the end times, as we approach the return of the Lord, as we approach the rapture of the church, we know that things are going to wax worse and worse. And there will be small stays in there um, from, from destruction and things like that. But eventually it's going to happen. And it's really hard to find America in the Bible. We have a hard time as far as the end time players trying to locate us as a major player, we just don't seem to exist. There's some ideas that maybe we are the friends from a distance or we are the, the, the cubs of the lion, but n neither one of those really plays in. Neither one of those really works. It's kind of a stretch, and it could still be, but it's kind of a stretch. So at some point in time, America has to stop being the powerhouse that she's been as far as the world in it being a leader of of morality and of selflessness. And we know that's going to happen. So we, we hope for the restoration of our land as patriots, but we also understand the return of the Lord is imminent. By the way, if you haven't been paying attention, you need to. I know it's hard to try to read news and, and it's very frustrating and it's just all sorts of all sorts of foolishness, but there are some good um, semi-balanced sites that you can go to and get some news. But one of the things you need to pay attention to is that Israel signed a peace treaty with with the United Arab Emirates, and now there are multiple Mid Eastern nations who are talking about agreeing to peace. Now, this is the stuff that leads up to the rapture of the church and the last week of Israel's history, that week of tribulation. So it's getting very interesting right now. Uh, the Bible says, you know, when they say peace, peace, then sudden destruction cometh. So all these peace deals are being made now with Israel. Um, a seven-year peace treaty is just around the corner with, with um, their, their worst enemy. So keep a watch out. We don't know if we will be around to hear the results of the seven-year peace treaty or if we will simply be gone. If we will, if that will happen simultaneously, they'll agree to the peace and then the, then the church will be raptured out. We don't know the exact timing in there. We just know that that marks the beginning of the tribulation. And, and that's going to be an exciting time. So there is a time when America will cease to be as a major player as it is now. And we are dangerously close to not being a, a major player now. Um, but I wanted to go back and because we, we seem to forget that 
it hasn't been that long since we had presidents that talked about the Lord earnestly. And in 1974, Ronald Reagan was giving his, his speech, that, that's very well known, famous speech, on the shining city upon the hill. And he concluded with this. He said, we cannot escape our destiny, nor should we try to do so. The leadership of the free world was thrust upon us two centuries ago in that little hall of Philadelphia. In the days following World War II, when the economic strength and power of America was all that stood between the world and the return to the Dark Ages, Pope Pius XII said, the American people have a great genius for splendid and unselfish actions. Into the hands of America, God has placed the destinies destinies of an afflicted mankind. We are indeed, Ronald Reagan returned to say, we are indeed, and we are today, the last best hope of man on earth. There's a lot of truth in that statement. As a nation that was firmly fixed on God, firmly fixed on the principles that man is free and naturally free because of God's creation. That set us up as a leader in the free world. We have been known for centuries as an unselfish people, as a whole. Obviously, we are selfish, humans are selfish, but as a nation, we have shared our wealth, shared our, our, um, uh, our excesses, shared in our medicine, shared in our research. We have shared the inventions that God has given us with the world. We have done these things. We have benefited the world because we've honored God. We are not going to do that soon if we continue the road that we are on. If we continue this direction and continue the unrest and continue the lack of, of law, the lack of moral center, if we continue this and if we elect a president and politicians who, are, who will not condemn this kind of thing, who will not stand for the rule of law, then America as we know it, as the world knows it, will come to a screeching halt. And at that point, it will get very interesting in this world because America has stood in the gap for many, many years and in many ways, more ways than it's possible for us to even understand. There are things that America has done that the world may never know to help other nations. And we we have we have always had a group of people who have maligned the nation who have you know well we've only the only reason we've ever fought a war is because of oil the only reason we've ever done this is because of money. Um, one of our former presidents in his book said that we have raped every other nation in the world. The only reason America is great is because we've raped every other nation in the world. And and in fact, if you read President Obama's book Dreams from My Father, um, you will find that that was their theory that the only reason America is a strength is because we've raped all these other nations, taken all of their resources and, and things like that. Um, it's a grotesque misstatement. It is a grotesque misunderstanding. Many of the nations that are around today are around because of America, because we've invested in them, because we buy their products, because we have gone in and helped them be free, because we've stood in the gap and we've been their allies and we have protected them from total destruction. I mean, there's just so many things that America has done. And yes, we have a, a human history like every other nation. There are things that we have done that were not good, things that we have done that were shameful. But we have a tendency to take those things and learn from them and grow better overall. We have seemed to have turned a direction in which we want to ignore all the things that we did, and we are driving down a path that is reversing our direction, going back to a time of lawlessness, going to a time where there is there is no, um, no moral center. And if we continue this, then, then we're going to see the destruction of our nation. If you have not studied Ronald Reagan, I encourage you to do so. There's a book that is very interesting reading called Reagan in Letters, and it's just all the letters that he wrote. You know, Ronald Reagan returned mail. He returned letters to everyone that wrote him, and he hand wrote them, and, and he wrote everyone personally. And, and in those letters, there's, there's a, a great time where he and, and, a, and a pastor are debating theology. Ronald Reagan was a very godly man. 
And uh, I'm not saying he was perfect. Nobody is. Nobody will ever be except Jesus Christ. So don't get that idea. And the idea that we sometimes get as Christians that we've got to vote for this perfect guy. There's no such thing as a perfect man, not a perfect woman. So we vote according to who is closest to the moral center of the Bible, who is pro pro-constitution because our constitution is based and anchored in the Bible, anchored in God. So as we continue into this election season, please, I beg you, pray, read the Bible, and match candidates to Scripture who closestly matches the Bible. Whoever is the closest to Scripture, that's who we need to vote for. I'm not telling you who to vote for. I'm telling you, as a Christian, we are obliged to vote according to the Bible. So we should match people who is closest to Scripture, and that's who we vote for. But we also need to understand. We need to understand we're not voting for Christ to be the president. That's that's not going to happen. We're not voting for someone who is picture perfect or who has every single religious thought that we have, agrees with every single doctrine that we have, agrees with everything that we think how it ought to be. We are voting for the one who close, who's closest to matching scripture. So that's what we want. That's who we need to vote for. And, and I don't know about you, but I miss Ronnie Reagan. Uh, I enjoyed him. I served in the military under him, and he was a great commander-in-chief. He was a great president, and he did a lot of wonderful things. So don't forget that God is all over America. We were founded in him, started in him, and if we want to survive, we must return to him. So hopefully I will be more together, and I will see you tomorrow actually in the morning and uh, before be, by, by the 1030 mark. That's always my goal. Doesn't always happen, but that's always my goal. So I'll be praying for you. You pray for me. Take care. We'll see you in the morning.